Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In the last video, I talked a lot about the practical considerations regarding the design and building of a trapped antenna. Now, if you haven't seen this yet, I've put a link for it up here in the corner just for you. In this video, I will show you how to use the free 4NEC2 antenna modeling program to design the antenna. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every single comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So let's dive right into modeling this antenna. There are two basic ways to model a trapped antenna in 4NEC2. The first is to simply model a dipole antenna and drop the traps into the appropriate segment of the legs of the wire. So you have a single wire across the whole thing. We have our source dropped in the middle. We drop our traps at the appropriate segment in this single wire. The problem here is the lack of easy control over the length of the inner wires between the source and the trap and the outer wires between the trap and the end of the antenna. Now there's an easier way. You can define the inner dipole for the higher frequency here, just as I've done. We have a single wire from here to here, source here, L1, and then we also have the additional wires attached to the end, L2, and we drop our trap in at the first section segment of the outer wires. Now you can vary the length of the inner and the outer wires totally independently for final virtual tuning. Now let's see what this looks like in 4NEC2. Well the first thing that we need to do is open the file. So here's the file that I have supplied. Now before we do anything, we need to set the foundations for the design. We want to set the characteristic impedance. Dipoles are around 75 ohms at any distance off of the earth. And inverted Vs run about 50 ohms. Now we're doing a dipole, so we're going to use 75 ohms. We want to set the editor to the NEC editor new. So we go to settings. NEC editor new. You could also do control F4 if you wanted to. Because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We'll open the editor. And the first thing we want to do is set our units. So we go to the symbols tab. Down at the bottom it says scaling. And I'm going to use feet. Now you can set it to meters if you like. But I'm going to use feet. Next, we want to set our frequency and ground specifications. Now, the, the antenna that I'm working on here is an 80 meter, 40 meter antenna. So I'm going to set this frequency here to the center frequency of the 40 meter uh, antenna because that's where I'm going to end up tuning this one. I'm going to select real ground in the environment. Connect wires for Z equals zero to ground. I'm going to select that. And then you can choose various types of grounds here. I'm just going to choose moderate ground for my particular situation. Now we can turn our attention to defining the symbols associated with the design. Defining symbols makes experimentation a lot easier because we can change the values associated with the design in one place. It's a lot like defining constants in the header of a programming project. Now, I like to use very descriptive names so I can easily remember what they really are. Let's take a look at the symbols that I have defined here. I like defining the length of the segments for the design and then calculating the number of segments for a given wire. This way, my segmentation is consistent across the design. Here I've defined a segment length of 0.25 feet, which is about three inches or a one quarter foot or 0 0.0762 meters. Now I, I define the height of my antenna at 55 feet and you go, well, 
Why 55 feet or 16.76 meters? Well, that's because the tower that I have out in my yard is 55 foot tall upon which I might want to mount this antenna. Next, we have L1, which is the length of the inner wire. This is the high frequency wire. And then, and I have that defined as 32 feet or 9.53 meters. Because according to the antenna uh, calculations, 32 feet is about right for a 40 meter antenna. Now, based on the length of L1 and the segment length I've chosen, we calculate the number of segments in that particular wire. L2 is the additional length beyond the traps that we have to add so that our antenna is resonant in the 80 meter band. And for 3.75 megahertz, the total length of a quarter wave side of the antenna is about 62 feet or 18.9 meters. Now we already have 32 feet in the form of L1 on the inside of the traps. So 62 minus 32 is 30 feet for L2. That'll work fine. Now the trap is going to shorten this some more, but because we're going to be using the optimizer in 4NEC2 to determine the actual length of L1 and L2, the lengths of L1 and L2 are not really very critical. Those are all going to be adjusted in the process of doing this simulation. So I chose 32 feet or 9.53 meters for L2. Again, like L1, I calculate the number of segments given our segment length here for the, uh, for the L2 section. Next, I define the radius of the wire that I'm going to be using. Now, remember, this is the radius, not the diameter. I've, I've made the mistake of putting in diameter before. Um, according to the wire charts, the 12 gauge wire that I'm going to be using has a diameter of 0 0.0808 inches, which is 0 0.0404 inches for the radius. This converts to 0.00336666666666 and on finitum feet or 0 0.00103 meters. Lastly, we want to define the specifics associated with the trap. We have the resonant frequency of the trap, F trap, which is, I have it set to 7.15 megahertz. I have chosen a capacitance of 47 picofarads for my capacitance to use in the trap. And then for convenience, calculating the inductance of the trap, it's one divided by the quantity four times pi squared times the frequency squared times the capacitance of the trap quantity. And then the Q of the trap, well, I chose a Q of 1000 uh, frankly, it's kind of a number I picked out of the air, which isn't all that unreasonable if we construct everything nicely. Now, with all the symbols defined, we can turn our attention to the geometry of the antenna. In order to easily keep the feed point in the center, I created a single segment wire in the center. So you see, I have a single segment wire in the center, which is only a segment length long, so it's half a segment to the left, half a segment to the right, L1 connects to the end of it, L2 to the end of it, the trap drops in here, do the same thing on this side, L1 connects up to the end of this guy, L2 to the end of this guy, we drop the trap into here. Now this also gives you the opportunity to easily turn this into an inverted V. I've provided a generic version of this antenna model in the zip file whose link may be found in the description. You can use this file to easily create a model of the inverted V version of this antenna. Now, let's see what it looks like in 4NEC2. So to take a look at the geometry, we're going to go to the geometry tab here. And this is where the antenna geometry is defined. I have five wires defined. The first one 
is the feed point, which I have identified as TAG1. TAG, it, it is our single segment center conductor. It exists one half of a segment length to the negative side and one half of a segment length to the positive side. And so that is tag number one. Tags two and three are the inner legs of our trapped antenna, the high frequency legs. Notice I'm using L1 segs for the number of segments. And tag two goes from minus L1, which is the length of the L1 section to the left, to the center feed point wire here. And L, the tag three goes to from the other side of this center feed point to plus L1. So that takes care of the left inner and the right inner. The outer sections, we have two outer sections here. The L2 wires have been defined in such a way that the first segment of the wire is the one that is closest to its associated L1 wire. This way, the traps will reside in segment one of each of the L2 wires. The L2 wires are tags four and five. You can see here, tag four starts at the minus L1 and goes out to minus L1 minus L2. And tag five goes from plus L1 out to plus L1 plus L2. Now we can add our source by going to the source load tab. We add a voltage source here. The feed point is tag one. And we're, there's only one segment in the feed point. So it's segment one. Don't forget to add the real portion of one and the imaginary portion of zero. Then we can add our traps. We're adding two traps, one in each leg. Remember L2 sections are tags number four and five. So we have an LC trap at what, the first segment of tag four. And we use our Symbols here, Q trap, L trap, C trap for that trap. And then the other one is in tag five. Also, remember we define these so that they would always reside in the first section of the L2 lengths. So at tag number five, we have the first and the last as segment one. And again, Q trap, L trap, and C trap. Now, we save the file, and now we're going to check our geometry. So we're going to open the geometry window here, and it should look pretty much just like this. We have the feed point here. We have L1 and L1. We have the traps, and we have L2 and L2. Now, if it doesn't look like this, then you need to make whatever corrections that you need to make and, and try again. But that's what it should look like right there. Once you know that you have the geometry right, it's time to tune the antenna. To do this, we're going to use the optimizer in 4NEC2. Using the optimizer requires us to close the editor. And then we can go to Calculate, Start Optimizer, or you could simply hit F12. When the optimizer opens, now we're going to be tuning the high frequency sections, the L1 sections first, always tuning the high frequency first. We make sure that this is the center frequency that we want for that particular part of the antenna. We're going to select L1 out of the variables list, and then we simply click on Start and sit back and watch the show. And it has completed its optimization, and 
we see that with a length of L1 of 33.518 feet, we will end up with an SWR of 1.1179 to 1. Now, you can note this value here and manually change the value of the symbol using the NEC editor, just like you were entering it before. And then at that, this point, you could choose to save the NEC file with a new name. Or you can click on Update NEC File, and you can give it a new name right here. L1, opt, and save it. Now, it does not automatically open the new file. You're going to have to open that file yourself. Either way, I like to save new results like this in a new file name, just in case something gets hosed along the way. So we're gonna close the optimizer. We're going to open the file that we just saved here. And now we're ready to tune the lower frequency length, L2. And the process is very much so the same. Calculate, start optimizer. We're choosing L2 because L2 is the outer, outer ones here for the lower frequency. And we have to change the frequency. I'm going to change it to 3.75 megahertz because that's the center of the 80 meter band. And then again, we click on start and watch the show. All right, it is completed its optimization. And we see that with a, an L2 length, notice how much shorter this is. Notice that with an L2 length of 20.769 feet, we'll end up with an SWR of 1.1125. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Only here, I'm gonna put L1 and L2. Save the file. I'm going to exit here. I'm going to open the new file that I just created. Now, the lengths of L1 and L2 are in interacting with one another. And because we significantly changed this outer one, we really want to go back and re-optimize the L1. So that's just what we're going to do. We're going to go in here and do calculate, start optimizer again. And we're going to choose 7.15 as our frequency. And we're going to choose L1. And with a length of 33.491 feet, we have an SWR of 1.0951. So we're going to update our NEC file again. And we're going to open this new file that we just updated. And like I said, they interact with one another. We just changed L1, so we're going to go in and we're going to optimize L2 one more time. L2, 3.75. And it has completed it. So according to this, if we use a... Uh, L2 length of 20.781 feet. Then we end up with an SWR of 1.1128. So I'm just going to rename this. And I'm going to open it. And we are now ready to see how this thing actually works. We have modeled it. We've tuned it. Now let's see what it looks like. We're going to do a frequency sweep. 
Let's do a frequency sweep on the 40 meter band from 7 to 7.3 megahertz. And it has completed. And so we see that our 40 meter band looks like this. And we're resonant right here at 7.15 megahertz. Not too bad covering pretty much the whole 40 meter band. Let's do this now with the 80 meter band. 3.5 to 4 megahertz. And now we can see the results on the 80 meter band. You can see the bandwidth isn't all that spectacular here. Now, if you want to export the data from this analysis uh, and use it in a spreadsheet or whatever, if you do plot, you can export, I'm going to export the, the uh, SWR data, and it gives it in this form, and you can just copy this and then paste it directly into your spreadsheet and do whatever analysis you care to do on it. Now, we can also do a far field. So we can see what the propagation looks like. Set your frequency that you're interested in. And then the, we are going to look at, well, you can look here at the info. I like looking at the 3D and the multicolor. So you can see the, the, the traps, you can see the feed point, and then you can see the propagation pattern on 40 meters with this antenna with the height of 55 feet. Now we can do the same thing again at 3.75 and see what it looks like for that one. Kind of a cloud burner because it is an 80 meter antenna and it's not exactly where it needs to be, but there is some directionality to it at the center of the band. So at this point, if we look at our information here, we have a capacitance of the trap is 47 picofarads. And the inductance, what this calculates out to be, is 10.542 microhenries with a Q of our trap of 1,000. Our L1 is 33.4915 feet, which comes out to 33 feet, 5.9 inches, or 10.208 meters. And then L2 is... 20.78059 feet or 20 feet 9.37 inches or 6.334 meters. And you have a fairly decent dual band antenna. So there you have it, front to back. You are now ready to design and create your own trapped antenna using 4NEC2. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.